Greetings hobbyists and welcome to another Blender Basics video. All of these videos are designed for people relatively new to Blender looking to get a grip on exactly what this powerful program can do. And we'll cover all the elements that you need to know to get started including things like navigation, manipulating objects and all those tools that you need to achieve the results you're looking for. We'll do this in a series of short videos so they're all clearly labelled so you can easily search for them. And in each video we'll cover the bare basics while going on to things that are slightly more advanced so that as you continue on your journey through Blender you can improve the way that you use these different elements. And in this video we're going to be talking through extensions and add-ons in Blender. So if we go to edit and preferences this is something that can cause a little bit of confusion. We have here the get extensions option and underneath it we've got add-ons and themes. And the reason this can cause some problems is that in a lot of previous videos people have mentioned add-ons because I think it's in Blender 4.2 they changed add-ons slightly and now we have extensions as well and this can cause some complications so we'll talk through those and make sure everyone's happy with where these come in and where we can get things like add-ons from. So firstly, although it's not a major part of the video, I'm going to mention themes. We've talked about themes briefly previously, but themes are how we can change all of the different aspects of Blender's appearance. Mostly things like the 3D viewport and adding different colours or line thicknesses and things like that. So that's going to be relevant in a minute, but one thing you should know is you can actually set up themes, and you can do this at the top where you can save a theme, or you can install a theme or add a theme from somewhere else, and that will be all of this information as part of that theme so you can change everything really quickly in one big go. So you'll see why that's relevant in a second. Now add-ons are very different. Add-ons are a way of either adding some additional functionality to Blender or potentially a different layout of functionality that's already there or just making something so that there are shortcuts added that are going to basically make things quicker to do. Add-ons are one of the most powerful things about Blender. And if I was you, I'd be using those pretty much straight away as you start your Blender journey. Some people have this bizarre idea that using add-ons is cheating and you have to learn all of the difficult slow ways of doing everything in Blender before you start using add-ons. That's like stating you need to know how to build a car before you start driving. It's just not the case. And you're just turning something that can be a really fun thing to learn to use into something really tedious that's gonna take twice as long to learn anything. And just like owning a car, with an add-on, if you find something that it can't do, or you do need to go deeper into it, for example, if your light stops working in your car, that's the point you go and have a look at the manual, and you start going into the small fine detail. But honestly, use add-ons from the beginning. An example of an add-on, if I activate it, is Ball Tool. We talked about this in the last video, where this is a very quick way of, if I Shift and D to duplicate this object, we can then Shift, Click, Control and Minus, and that will do our boolean which has saved us all the time of having to set this up as a boolean modifier and it's also done some great extra things like parenting it so that if we move this the boolean will move with it and setting it into wireframe mode so that we don't have to see it it's also put this into a separate cutter collection so we can hide our cutters and find them more easily it's done a load of functions all in one click and if you want to see more on that have a look at the last video on the blender basic series but this is the sort of thing that add-ons do. They just improve your experience in Blender. Now, if we come back to edit and preferences, we need to talk about where we're gonna get these add-ons and in some instances, themes from. And the first place you're gonna get them is already packaged in Blender. And you will have some of these add-ons, I've got more than you will have, already in Blender as you come into it. And to activate them, all you need to do is tick the box and then you've got them good to go. Now there used to be a lot more add-ons that were included with Blender for free, but this meant that Blender was getting larger and larger as a program, and there are other issues with that as well, which I'll come to in a second. So what they decided to do in the Blender Foundation, which does make sense when you think about it, is that they decided to get rid of a lot of the add-ons that came with Blender because most people weren't using a lot of them, and instead they put them into an extension website. And we can access that in two ways, by clicking Get Extensions or by going to the website. Now when you come to Get Extensions the first time, you'll have this at the top that says that to use this, you need to be accessing the internet. Now Blender does not require you being on the internet to use it, and even when you've got these add-ons, you don't have to be on the internet to be able to use them. But you do need to allow Blender access to the internet 
to download them and put them onto Blender. And nicely, Blender doesn't have this working automatically, you have to tell it to turn it on, so you know that this isn't randomly accessing the internet in the background. So we're gonna click Allow Online Access, and then we've got access to a load of different add-ons here that we might want to use. And at the moment, these are the ones that I've got installed, but you can see here there's loads of additional ones available that we might want to be able to activate. And all you need to do is click Install, and it will bring it into Blender. So if anyone's saying there's an add-on that previously was included in Blender and you can't find it in the add-ons, it's very likely that it's here. The other way that you can get extensions is by coming to the extension warehouse, which is extensions.blender.org, and this is run by the Blender Foundation. At the moment, all of the add-ons that are on here are free, as are all the themes. That's right, this is for add-ons and, if we scroll down, themes. So that's why they've come up with this extension title, which has got both of them together. And in many ways, this is much nicer because it gives you a good set of information about what you're getting here. For example, this has got ND, and this is a really cool add-on that has a huge amount of tools. There's a link to a playlist on that in the description, and also next to it you've got Loop Tools, which is another add-on that I'd recommend. And as I said, at the moment, all of these are available for free. Now if we click into this, for example ND, it will give you much more information about what it does. We've got some information at the top here. It's got a star rating and you've got all of these videos potentially about what it can do and information about what it does. And to get this you could either do it through Blender itself and that extension section I showed you earlier or you can just click get add-on and then when you bring this over to the side and annoyingly have to find it again, you just drag and drop this into Blender. And while I've already got this, you'll have something saying OK and you click it and then you've got that add-on in Blender. So that's the first two ways. They're either already here and in the add-ons or you're going to get extensions either from the Get Extensions or the Extension website. The final way that you can get extensions is from an external source. Now to do that, you're going to need to download your add-on. And most people will do that from either Blender Market. I get most of my add-ons from Blender Market. Though if you're watching this later than when I put this out, Blender Market is actually planning on changing its name to Superhive, so you may need to find it there. If that does happen, I will change the link in the description so you can click and find that really easily. There are also other websites, for example, GitHub, which will have a range of free ones. Blender Market has some free and some paid for or Gumroad, which may have free or paid for add-ons. And then with all those external sources, you will download a Blender add-on zip file. Once you've done that, you come to this tiny little drop-down menu, so we need to go to add-ons first, this tiny little drop-down menu and click install from disk, and you can find where that zip file is, though I actually think that it is vastly easier to open up where the files are found. So here you can see all of my add-ons here, and then you just drag and drop the zip file, make sure you don't extract the zip file, and then it'll say install from disk, click OK, and then you've installed your add-on. It's that easy and now it's functioning. Now if you do ever want to change anything about an add-on, you come to add-ons, if you've just installed one, it might tell you what you've just installed and only show that. You can get rid of that and bring all of them up. And for example, let's say I was using box cutter, this is a paid for add-on that I've got from Blender Market. We can drop down here and it's got things like the options of different colours and display options and things like that. So you find all your options in the add-on menu. Now what you do need to keep an eye out for is that every so often these add-ons will need updating. If this is an add-on that you've got externally from Blender, you'll need to go to that place and you'll be able to re-download it. And I must say that the people that do these add-ons are generally very good at doing updates very rapidly when a new version of Blender comes out or they're spotting issues. I use a massive amount of add-ons and I can't think of any problems I've had with those not being updated with the exception of one or two of the free ones that the person stopped working on. And bear in mind it was free, I can't really complain much about that. Now, one of the big changes about this is that previously all of the add-ons that came with Blender as standard, they could only be updated when Blender did an update, and that was relatively rarely. But what does happen now is that in the Get Extensions, for your installed add-ons, it will tell you if these are not updated. And just showing you what that looks like from when this has happened previously, all you do is you click Update, 
and then it will update that add-on so it's ready to go in its latest version, which may have added a tool or two or may have fixed a minor bug. Now what's really good about this is that it means that they can update these add-ons much more regularly and I actually, while initially was a bit weirded out by the idea of this being swapped over and get extensions being separated from the add-ons and themes, now I've kind of got used to it and actually I can understand the reasoning behind it and I'm pretty happy with it. Now what I don't want to do is give you a massive list of add-ons that I would suggest that you start adding to Blender. It's going to depend massively on your general usage of Blender. For example, there is one called 3D Print. So 3D, if I type it in here, 3D Print Toolbox that has a massive amount of tools and I think is absolutely invaluable, but that's because I use Blender for 3D printing. If you don't use Blender for 3D printing, this is going to be of no use to you. So while there are some that I would suggest are really worth having, and starting with straight away, the free ones of those include loop tools and ball tools. If you're going to be using anything with nodes, for example, geometry nodes, node wrangler is another one. But trying to give one list of add-ons that you need in inverted commas is just not going to be particularly helpful to you. What I will say is I've got a lot of videos that do cover various different add-ons, both free, external to Blender, included with Blender, or ones that are paid for. And while I do really recommend some, for example, I think that machine tools is an almost must have if you're gonna be using Blender. If I come to my normal Blender setup, which looks like this, you can see the theme is different and I've changed a lot of the coloring and I have all my add-ons here. Machine tools allows me to change very quickly between vertex mode, edge mode, and face mode. It's literally that quick. And then object mode and it gives me loads of options of really clever things I can do for example if I've got things over here I can then alt and a to then align those in the Z axis or in the Z axis and the Y axis and things like mirroring which is really really fast to do which allows me to mirror things to the other side so that I can then move things and they're mirrored across an object. Like things like that are very, very helpful or I could then do that for just one object. Let's come to this one and then edge and then control and B and then I can shift alt and X and mirror that to the other side. And these are things that some of them, again, you can do using your normal modifier setup, but it just makes it a much nicer place to be. And for me, $5 is an absolute bargain for that. And there are so many more tools. If you are interested in any add-ons that I do recommend, just check out some of my videos. I'll put some playlists in the description of my favorite add-ons as well as links to them, which are affiliate links. But don't just take anyone's word for it on an add-on that you need. Go and have a look at them, especially if they're paid for, and see what you think. But please do not be afraid of using add-ons straight from the beginning. It's going to save you so much time. You can always look at those in more detail if that's what you need to do for a particular issue. But most importantly, it's going to mean you enjoy using Blender more and that's the most important thing in the long run. If you get into Blender relatively quickly because it allows you to do things quicker, that's gonna mean you're gonna to wanna to keep on learning and enjoying what you can do. But these add-ons do vary in price from free to things that are much more expensive. For example, if I go into edge mode and bevel that, something like there, there are even add-ons where this is a destructive thing that you then can't go back and change easily. Well, actually, if you get certain add-ons, for example here, and I click Y and then Refuse, I can actually change this bevel as much as I want as if it was a non-destructive process. That's using an add-on called Mesh Machine. That's made by the same people that make machine tools, but it's way more expensive. I think it's about $35, but it has some tools that are absolutely amazing and I think really worth it but then I use Blender a lot. So you've got to base this on what you're gonna do. So there should never be any pressure for you to buy certain add-ons. A lot of the time there's ways you can do without them. It's just gonna cost you a lot of time. And for me, it's normally worth the money to save those many hours. But that's a decision you need to make. And as you watch more tutorials and videos of what you're doing, or you come and join us on the Patreon or the Discord, or you're just posting and people mention add-ons, you might realize that certain add-ons are ones that you want to make your life easier. So that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour explaining those add-ons, extensions, and themes, and where to get them. And hopefully that's given you a bit more of an idea of what people are talking about when you see them mentioned in videos. Have a great day, guys.